the agenda. Second, that's okay, motion by Armstrong, second by Holmes to approve today's agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, if we could stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. All right, it is public comment time. Do we have uh, anyone who wishes to make a public comment at this time? You're going to get some bonus time because JD's not here. So until uh, well, Jay I oh, talked to not Jamie and Jeff. I thought could maybe give an update on how things are going while we're waiting on JD. <laughs> Don't you think that only be fair? What do you think, Jacob? <laughs> Should we make it a motion? Good thought, Alex. Good thought. Good thought. Good coastal camp. Thought that counts, huh? Yeah. All right. Why do we get on rain on this side of the county? I know it's two, about two and a two point four over on Shenandoah side. Inch eighty. Yeah. Inch quarter. How about you, Jacob? Around two inches. Of the buffer that looks like yeah. That's the gauge. It rained hard a couple of different times. Yeah. Well, let's see. Going to look at the old KMA had 2.36 on it here just a little bit ago. Yeah. The uh, rain gauge winter in Lenox, three inches. There North some, of Neola, three and a half. There were some four inches listed, weren't there? No, not on here. No. Jerry Deets had a four incher. They were calling for pretty yeah. good rain till noon today. Till yeah. how long? Till noon. Yeah. Oh, till noon. I guess we won't be so, going down any dirt roads today. We'll yeah, we won't. We'll let, <laughs> we'll let Christy uh, work. We'll let Christy drive. Uh, <laughs> no dirt roads today. Ready on me, Paul? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're ready for you. Oh, hey, hey. So this is where we're going today, huh? Still suits everybody. What's your ETA? 90 minutes? Does that work into your schedule? Uh, a little rainy, but on the other hand, that might be a good day. You know, yeah. Picture, uh, rainy day or other people. So.
Morning, JD King, Page County Engineer. I've got the engineer update which we sent yesterday afternoon, and then a couple of other equipment related items on the agenda. We'll do the engineer update first, and then turn our direction to the trucks. And that's why I got my uh, my brain dressed over here. We can help articulate. Anyway. Blades are out of the districts. We're hauling rock with four trucks, three tandems, and one belly dump. Pipe crews digging down on chain 55 east of the corner, actually east of the uh, east. Of, anyway, we're not. You know, the roads closed to the south. G50, uh, J55 directly east of Bradyville is closed. Manats is working there, and you should have had a picture of that with your update mm -hmm. yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So they're working down there on, on multiple pipes along that route, you know, through the pipes ahead of, of other work uh, on the road is a proper technique. Uh, I spoke with Phil Mather yesterday. He picked up some pipe, he had three spots, three locations where the pipe was picked up yes, last week. And uh, of course, this is barring bar and weather. He was anticipating starting Wednesday on either the F Avenue or G Avenue or 200 Street, which is all up there. And I do have, I do have a map here just a moment. I will do that, sir. Just to refresh our memory, these are the seven locations of pipe work done by, uh, intended to be done by Phil Mathis, outside contractor, helping the county get pipe work done. And, and we, uh, if we follow the route planned on the map this afternoon, we'll drive by one of those locations where he has, where he will be doing pipe work. Spray patches are still over towards Shenandoah on Sleepy Hollow area. The moors, well, we had two for a while yesterday, out mowing one on the pavements, one on the gravels up to the Northwest. And now we have one. The John Deere is down with aggravation with air conditioning problems. And the cat, the, the rear wheel with all the counterweight on it is broken, cracked, dead. Anyway, it's sitting in the in the shop waiting to get a wheel in sometime next week. We've got a, a crew, mainly a, a chainsaw guy and the district blade guy are going around the various districts ahead of the harvest, trimming down the overhangs and, and trees and brush that's interfering with, you know, large farm equipment movement for the harvest. So we do, you know, that's a consideration for the fall. I got guys tuned in to, you know, what's going on in the county. Also, uh, our same man put up the detour for J55 yesterday. It's a farm marked route. And if it's closed for, you know, a length of time, then we're obligated to stick up a, a sign of detour. We're going, other work going on in the shop, some, some regular uh, normal tire repair. Last week did a hydraulic hose with the sign truck. He's looking at once again the cat more the John Deere. We have a, a couple. Of, we have a couple of trucks in Omaha. One is our 24, the red truck tractor that we spoke of a couple of weeks ago with this high, this high maintenance cost that we've had last year, and that we were going to propose a alternative this morning. And those are the two starred things. We have truck bids on a single axle. 
and we, we solicited quotes on a, a truck tractor that's available. I'll get to those after we go with the update. The NATS is in and place and lock on J55 on the, the seal coat. We're putting on uh, quite a bit of rock. 3,000 tons to mile, pretty thick. Putting on with a dirty spreader in front of the coat. And they made it from the end of the project around the corner to the bridge and they were coming back. That was yesterday. And so they're gonna do the same thing again today. I didn't hear, I didn't hear from Randy that they weren't working. Of course, I didn't hear from that they did, but we anticipate that Manats is working because they're working on the road, they're hauling rock to it. it uh, you know, a little drizzle should not, should not affect their work. At least this thing duration. I do have some graduate assistant research folks coming down from Ames today. I'll meet them at the uh, at the office, try to figure out how to pronounce their names, and uh, we'll go down and show them what they want to see with our project. And they're primarily interested in the Odyssey part, but prior Odyssey work around the state was not done on a stabilized base. It's been done on just stick the gravel roads with no preparation. It's been done on, they put it on top of pavements, you know, like chip seal, except it's this thicker Odyssey. So this is a little bit of a different flavor, shall we say, than their normal experience with Odyssey. But I'm, I'm interested in seeing how it performs compared to our stabilized bases with, with chip seals on it, you know, get a little more structure and surface there. We're still working on our labor driver of a couple and last Friday, a maintenance, a maintenance outfit put a, put a, a fog seal, a proprietary fog seal on J28, which is 170th Street from Iowa 48 East to uh, Juniper. Actually. That was a second application on that. There, right now, there are no pavement markings in the dark, in the in the wet. The road is really black, but we need to have a little time with traffic on that seal coat or on that on that fog seal, so that it takes off the slick or the so that the paint will stick better. I've uh, experienced paint flaking off or flagrantly after a couple of weeks. I waited a couple of weeks to paint and it just flaked. It didn't adhere very well. So I need some traffic on that. Uh, maybe not in the, in the shine. Any questions about the update? Not talking about truck bits. About that next. Questions, anyone? I had a phone call here. Sandy Phillips called about her road out there. Mm -hmm. A couple concerns uh, that the, the dust control she put down was taken off. Right. Want to make sure it be put back whenever it's done. It, well, it, when we when we shape up the road, uh, did did she talk about that? Or yeah. Would you like to hear our explanation? I mean, we well, that's know. what she with the road going narrow six feet. What you said is that right? Three feet on each side. Or something. Okay, so I'm just narrow the road. Yeah. Yeah. She wants to to say the width it is. I think on her foot, right? Just for trucks. Yeah. We're going to narrow it up so that so that we can when it's extra wide like it is now, it's difficult to, to get ground, mm -hmm. keep ground in it, and we'll have it such that trucks can safely pass. 
one another. You know, there's two way traffic there in the port. Right, her but, concern uh, was, I'm sure she told you guys this, but she told me was that it needs to be wider than the paved road due to the dust. On the paved road, you know, trucks to me not be worried about not seeing each other. That was a concern. You know, it's, when the dust is roaring, maybe it can be quite as narrow as what the paved road is. I don't know. That's, yeah, and, and when we're done with this, then we will, because we, we chewed up our dust control, we'll put some dust control back. I thought that would be the case. So, but. you know, she's uh, she has special circumstances there, and we, we uh, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. A uh, quick question: When you on the brush overhang, what what's the stack? I mean, are you trying to get it? 13, 6, or 14, do you, do you take, you don't no, take, we don't, sure we don't take, take a measure and tape out there. <laughs> I mean, if it looks like it'll be a problem. Now, on the, when you're out, that's something else. When you're out cutting, head south, down south of town, start right there at that limb that's laying on the county farm cut when they got the chainsaw. You know, if they're out using the saw, it'd be nice to maybe tackle that. If they're out the saw anyway. It'll be down here. I'm pointing wrong. Go down right there along the road on the county farm. That big limb I told you about. Oh, yeah. I think oh, Justin was, was going to do that when he was here. He said he was going to grab some. Maybe I'll just give Justin. Might, but well, it's not a secondary road, though. I've got secondary roads to work on first. Okay. Well, the, the general fund benefits from the county farm. That's where all that money goes, isn't it? The general fund, yes, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. correct. But we got a chainsaw out. I think that'd be something. I don't know that it's the tenant's issue to take care of trees that fall down. I don't know. That. No, but he offered to do that. He said he had equipment, he could do it. But typically, you know, when this came up, uh, we talked a little bit about it in this meeting, what, a month ago now or five weeks, whatever. Mm -hmm. But on issues like you just raised, you know, with the number of uh, of issues, secondary roads typically does not take care of that kind of thing, historically, because of the 930 miles of road they're trying to maintain and trying to squelch complaints. Typically, much like on the pipes where we can't keep up with it, where we do some, we contract some out, you know, tree work off, off the county uh, right away has typically not been done by our secondary. Yeah, no, I'm just the throughout the chainsaw. I'm just looking at this more common sense throughout the chainsaw and drive. It wouldn't take very long. I'm not saying to stop everything, stop the road grader, get a chainsaw and drive over there, or drive by with the chainsaw. Whack it up if if our tenant's not to do it, or if we need to look at somebody I'll, to do I'll it. Call, I'll call Jess and see where he's at. Yeah. The other thing I had a question on the on the air conditioning on the tractor. There's some talk my head. Do we have a, a vacuum pump and gauges? We're not, yeah. Not, not able to fix it. Okay, yeah. I was wondering about that. Right. We have yeah, some, some, I didn't know if we had this. Yeah. 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 Air conditioning can be a challenge. I know that. As we move into talking about the trucks, please, you gentlemen in the back, the brain trust that JD calls you, if you'd use that microphone, that you can just sit there and use this uh, handheld so that the Zoom audience can hear you. Thank you. Oh, well, she's already seen it. the one who Great. Thank you.
the single axle dump truck we took bids on is used primarily to tow our spray patcher. It uh, hauls chips, you know, it pulls a spray patcher around. This is a, right now we're pulling for Sterling. The box is rusted out and it's time for, for a new vehicle because that spray patcher is, is a key piece of our road maintenance equipment. In the summertime, it runs every day. It's fit to go or see if goats and pavements, both the asphalt and PC, are worked on by the spray patcher in that group. So this, uh, this truck's uh, essential part of our fleet. Giving you in, in, in last Friday at three o'clock, the auditor's office opened bids and read off read off the numbers, and you see them on this truck bid tab. We got RVO truck center with a map with a, with a bid of cap chassis and truck equipment of two hundred twenty thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and fifty eight cents. Truck Center Company quoted a freight liner. And you know, so the freight liner cabin chassis and the same truck equipment. You know, snow plow hitch, snow plow tailgate sander, uh, dump box. And it's a total cost of $207,334.00. Now the other the other paper that I gave you when I handed up the truck bids was a two pager front and back on the first page. The, the front page, this is uh, from three years ago, or more than three years ago, when I was uh, talking about a tandem truck spec. But, you know, just because uh, the 2018 budget proposal for equipment, that's not what. Uh, what I want to highlight here, the, the second and the third page, and we had this discussion about freight liners and max. So that's what, you know, this, to a certain extent, this, this hasn't changed. This is still the way, this is still my experience with freight liners. I did have uh, Jamie call the neighbors, you know, when, they, when we're reviewing the bid, Great liner bit. He did to make some calls. Jamie, could you speak to that, please? I called the the three neighboring counties because I know that they run some freight liner trucks. And two out of the three counties were not happy with the trucks. They'd had issues and problems and, and uh, trouble getting some parts for the freight liners. Um, and the, the consensus from those two counties both was they both. I think one has got a Mac on order now. The other one had purchased a Peterbilt over a freight liner this last time they got trucks. And they said compared to those two other brands, the freight liner is just a cheaper built truck. And what about the third county? They they got freight liners, but they're all newer freight liners, so they haven't had them that long. So far, they like them, but like I said, they have not had them all that long. Yeah, a year or two old trucks, something like that. So these bids, these are for this new equipment, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so how do the how do the warranties compare freight line and Mac? The, the Max was broke down. Freight liner just I think you called it just a basic warrant. There really wasn't. Didn't break down as far as what miles and time wise. But <coughs> don't quote me. The back was year, something like that. Standard warning. There is options in there for extended warnings from both of them. And 
do we have any sense on on resale because you know at, at some point all this equipment gets resold is there an advantage with mac over freight line on resale yeah, yeah it'll hold its value a lot better are all are they all three of the same transmission yes and then how it's all bid the same yes we did international did not bid this time up because their order form was full for the next okay so that long before they really got across so they didn't even bid on this is just the freight line in the back the difference is your cab and yeah it's it's the yes, yes, cheaper cab. what i gathered from visiting with the other two counties is just the cheaper but the last thing So it's about a thirteen thousand five hundred dollar difference is what we're looking at. And what do we have in the budget? I mean, it's still under what was budgeted for that piece of equipment in your mind, correct? Correct. This is the this is the first major item purchased this year. We you know, have slightly under five hundred thousand dollars in our new equipment fund. Okay. Are you selling the what number? There's the blue semi. Get rid of it. The one that pulls the belly down. So you get rid of it. Well, we we will. Uh, this is here. Well, this this is for the single axle. The next item of discussion is okay. the truck tractor. And yes, we'll be selling. We're, getting rid of it. We're going to park it and then sell. Are these other counties saying their new trucks are the, are doing emissions better? Or is it going to be a constant problem with the new trucks? We haven't had that much trouble. No, the back did not have as much trouble. Really, maybe it's time for here and there. I mean, not even the max. And we've had we've had the Mac since one of the Well, is there a, somebody want to make a motion on which one of these to buy? I'll make a motion to buy the map. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion by Armstrong, second by Holmes to purchase the map. RDO Truck Center, where are they at? Oh, West Omaha. West Omaha. Yeah. What about where, where's Truck Center? Leave Andy is that the truck center not Council Council Okay. Very good. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, since we're spending money, let's do a roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Well, How thank long will it take to get it? A long time. Okay. Really? So how does that work? Do you put it some money down and then pay the rest on delivery? Or is it all up front? Uh, usually we, we split it into two payments. Okay. When the when the cabin chassis arrives and is at the truck equipment shop, we'll pay for the cabin chassis. Okay. And then once the truck equipment is delivered, put on the truck and truck delivered, we have a second payment. So they're not the, you know, the equipment companies or the, the vendors aren't hanging out for the whole amount, sure. but we don't pay until there's something out there. Okay, super. All right, your second item. The second item is a truck tractor uh, replacing our number 24, which is also an international. While you're distributing that, our nine o'clock is here. And Evan, I know you've got another appointment. Uh, yeah, I've got 10 30. Okay, okay, okay. 
But okay. What we may do though is uh, flip flop Evan and uh, yeah, that's debate. fine because that will help me. I can no, find we, no, we can do yours. We'll we'll do yours. We got time for you. Get you okay. on the road. But. Well, you estimate the value of the truck we're going to sell here. <laughs> yeah, about forty-four thousand. Or that's not hard to say. I don't know if Purple A will No, was that on Purple A or on Bigger? Mm -hmm. Purple A. Did you talk to the Purple Wave guy at ISAC? I did for a minute. Yeah, I've never used Purple. I've used Bigger. Well, you can't, can you? That's for government only. Purple wave for government entities only. Is that correct? No, no, no. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oftentimes, purple wave. Yeah. I think the government option, purple wave, does one. GSE or whatever. G. Well, the government. Look, they sell a lot of military stuff. And emissions is most of the problem. Uh, uh, That's unbelievable. I know nothing about uh, that's one piece of equipment with emissions, so I've uh, not messed with much, but a lot of people are doing deleting and all those things. Huh? Maybe I don't know what that costs. I don't know if that's a mint. A mint. I wondered about that. Because even if it was, those would be more yeah. I wondered what the if there was actual rules or it just cost money. Are you about ready, JD? We have a, a, a quote on a truck tractor sitting on the lot. Last week there was, two weeks ago there was five sitting on the lot that these guys went and looked at. They said, you got, you got a color selection. And then uh, they called back and said, there's what, two left? And that's fine. That's you. That's fine. White is fine. Not mm -hmm. uh, It's a. It's a. It's a robust truck tractor. It'll have a. We'll add a tag axle, so we have a triple in the back. Well, why don't you guys talk about the, the uh, five thousand five hundred. Mac. Who's that, Mike? Please, Jamie. It's a Mac and uh, 505 horse, 13 speed, manually automated transmission. It's got a little heavier frame. We'll have disc brake. Comes equipped with strobe lights. Add fenders, a tag axle, and a headache track. I did. The idea is to put the tag axle on. Hopefully, in a year or two, we need to purchase a new belly dump anyway, sometime. Get a three axle belly dump. It grows 96,000, which, in that case, we can haul 32 ton and we can eliminate a hand uh, truck for snow. Say, where you know, one of those trucks. Kind of work smart. Sure. Well, if we can, you know, we can with with, with two ninety six thousand pound belly dump trailers, we can haul what two of those sixty. It would be a sixty ton turn, and that's 
That's four trucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can, you know, some people would say, well, you can cut down your labor supply then because you only need two drivers at four. But it, with our staff the way it is, we can take two guys and put them somewhere else, do another task. Mm -hmm. We can haul rock with less with less people, with less equipment. Cut trees on the county farm. Mm -hmm. We could even do that. Hey, tree. Uh, a, a limb, <laughs> a big, a, a big hey, limb. limb. Uh, the uh, the add-ons, you know, a wet kit. We need that to to make our hydraulic detachable trailer work. Uh, so what? Uh, I, I'm gonna have you cut to the chase. What are the numbers? I mean, you the guys numbers know 141 with with all the extra stuff, which turns into seventeen thousand five hundred dollars with a headache rack, fenders, uh, ninety five hundred dollar pusher axle, forty two hundred dollars for a wet kit. Wiring for the belly dump at 17.5 altogether. The total cost of this truck tractor sitting that's sitting on the lot is 141,300. 141,300. Yeah. So and that's in Jacob, the budget. To Jacob's earlier question, with what you're going to sell, any idea on what what you might get out of that? Uh, we, you know. Okay. Okay. You know, you know, we we almost you know with much kind of money we've been spending on this twenty four, we can pay somebody to take it and be better ahead, you know, a few dollars. You can put it out the back and climb on. So budgetarily, that fits. I mean, we we plan for those two purchases in this twenty two budget. I think so. You think because so? I don't have it. I don't have it from me. But this is what we need. No, I don't have my green book here. The rest of your budget right now, how's it? You're under. We just the, started. Well, we just started. Yeah. But so yeah. he was. If you just saw that sheet, he was under where. Yeah, well, but we, you know, but we have some expense. We don't spend on a straight line. Right. But you know, we do have the motor grader rebuilt to pay for. Right. But we also didn't spend didn't spend three hundred thousand dollars of. Of equipment money from last fiscal year that cash year is over, but but then we'll have to do a budget amendment to increase our spending authority to, to, to pick that up. You know, the, the 300,000 that we get to spend makes our balance better, but we only can spend $500,000 less than that. But, but because we didn't spend that and we agreed to do this you know this budget rebuild we tried to we tried to see if they would bill us before the end of the fiscal year for this rebuild and they would not before july right i can hear if you get if you got forty one thousand out of the selling the old truck get a hundred there three twenty We've got 500, 570,000 basically. We're talking about 100 and 250. What did we pay on the rebuild? Like 250,000 or so? 255, yeah. Yeah, half a million in new equipment, yeah. but we owe 300,000 on the rebuild. We just spent 220 on the uh, rebuild single. Uh, but but we're going we're gonna to ask the board to amend the budget from we carried over. About three hundred thousand yeah, in yeah, yeah, last, yeah, yeah. you know, because we're we're, we're 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 following board's direction to wait for the later in the fiscal year to spend money, but then we couldn't get it spent. Okay. But but we're operating so in good faith here that we will show you get to spend if we need to do a budget amendment. Whatever right. we do a budget. Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah, uh, 570,000 was a half a million budget this year, basically. Mm -hmm. And there's it's 300, 300 yeah. Yeah. period. Yeah. So we're, that's 800, so we're, we're is there any other equipment that's coming in this down the road? I still need to replace the board. No. But, but we're looking at new budget year on that. And we're going to have to see how the will work. Mm -hmm. And the motor grader right now estimate for a motor grader is what for a new motor grader building three forty. Well, not with a well with trade. We could not probably a, a net of two twenty two fifty. Yeah. So we'd still be close. We'd be within ten thousand. Yeah. Just cut your coffee budget. I don't drink coffee. I have other bad habits. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any other questions? What yeah. about the belly dump? When's that coming to play? Because it sounds like down the road here. That well, we're going to keep here. Be way more efficient to have that thing. Well, if we, oh, I'm sorry. What does a belly dump cost? Just for curiosity. Sixty thousand. If, uh, but we. Maybe not these guys, but I've purchased used belly dumps. I was going to ask mm -hmm. the next question around what in the trailers, you know, a lot of used trailers, Bob Green trailers, Dell trailers. Now, what, what? Yeah. Buy a new one, so what's 30 to 40 for a good used one or what? What's that? And we've rebuilt one of ours before with right. the shoe lad trailer down here at the interstate. The one that's got good structure, so it's not all screwed up. All right, well, if we could uh, keep things moving, have a motion. To I'll make a motion to purchase this right. truck off the line. Yep, as described, and you can pick and choose which one of the two you want. Make it white, though. <laughs> I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. And the, the only question I didn't ask on, like, is this uh, purchase here, what kind of warranty comes? Is that a, I mean, when you buy this kind of equipment, uh, uh, yeah, similar to probably the single axle, the two year 24,000 or 24 month, 250,000. I think is what it is, Chuck. The proposal above the new truck has listed and sitting on the lot with standard warranty. Okay. So somewhere you have to go hunt down and see what standards are. What, what that means. Okay. Well, just so we document it and we know when to use it if we can. All right. We have a motion second. Uh, let's have a roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay, motion carries. Okay, thank, thank you, you gentlemen. gentlemen. Are we still on for the to the yes, sewer at 130? 130 here. Okay. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you guys. Uh we're gonna ask uh Gary to flip. Gary if he you know Gary's got us listening. Uh just hang tight, Gary. We have a guest who has another appointment, I think, in Mills County. So Evan, come on up. Um and uh, let everybody introduce himself to you. Alan Armstrong from Shenandoah area. Okay. Uh, Chuck Morris, District 3. Take a home rural. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Evan Dundal. I'm a civil engineer with ISG. I'm going to give you a little background on this pipeline, but these, these conversations usually go well with dialogue. I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, I'm sure you have some. This has kind of come out of nowhere. Could you lift the mic yep, up a little absolutely. bit? Evan? Can you hear me then? Yeah, yep. we're fine. It's our Zoom audience. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So Midwest Carbon Express is a liquefied carbon dioxide line that is proposed through Page County here, being put together by Summit Carbon Solutions. Um, I believe they're out of Ames, uh, Summit Ag, and you may be more familiar with them. So under the state of Iowa law, Carbon dioxide, liquefied carbon dioxide, considered a hazardous liquid pipeline, which puts responsibilities on this board to provide county inspection for the construction of that through ag areas. Um, generally speaking, counties don't have the bandwidth to take on a project of this size. It's something you guys asked for. So the code also allows for you to hire a third party inspector. And that's what I'm here to, to offer our services for. Okay. We have done this work on previous pipelines that have gone through the state, most namely um, Dakota Access came through a few years ago. It was a 30 inch uh, crude oil line that went from Lyon County down to uh, Lee County in the southeast. We did 13 of the 18 
counties that were impacted by that for about 272 miles. So we have we have good experience with this. The way we approach these is we hire experienced pipeline inspectors to work this project and only this project. They're not going to be called off to do any other any other work for ISG. They're they're 100% focus is going to be on this project for the counties that hire us to do that work. Um, it is a pass through expense, which means that it's fully paid for by the pipeline. ISG would invoice this county. Uh, your auditor would then send that off to the pipeline. Once you get paid by the pipeline, you would then pay us. So there's no financial expectation on this county at any point in the project. Um, that's kind of the overview. Happy to answer any questions. I would just like to state that I, I don't work for the pipeline at all. I don't know anything about their design. The actual pipeline, its location, its size, I, I unfortunately don't have any better information at this point. So ISG is who you work for? I work for ISG. Okay, so. and that stands again for Iowa? Yeah, Ingersoll Serpinot oh. Group. I Ingersoll what? Serpinot. Okay. Group. It was the founders of the, the company back in the early 70s. We're headquartered out of Mankato, just for a little reference on who we are. Headquartered out of Mankato, we have 14 offices in Minnesota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. I'm out of our Des Moines office. We also have offices in Waterloo and Storm Lake here in Iowa. Okay. okay. So is this a, is this also a 30-inch pipeline? Would be that it, it, it won't be that large, depending on what you have. So the carbon dioxide is being generated at ethanol plants. That's then being liquefied and then put into this main line that's taking it up to Bismarck, North Dakota, or around there to sequester it into some deep wells. So if you're on a feeder line from one of the ethanol plants, it'll be smaller. If you're on the main line, it, it'll be a larger line. Okay. That guy that was in Isaac, you saw that carbon mm -hmm. booth. I talked to him. And that's a different output. Yep. Different different area of Iowa, but it's such what he said. And that's a navigator, is I believe who you yeah. talked with there. Yep. So um, assuming that all the bureaucracy works, mm -hmm. when, when, what's the time frame on this project? From all estimates that I've seen, it's from 18 to 24 months is when construction will start okay. from now. Now they have to still get easements. The Iowa Utilities Board about two weeks ago approved the schedule for the public information meetings throughout the counties. Mm -hmm. Yours is on October 14th mm -hmm. in this county. Um, they needed that approval before they could even start to have conversations with counties and landowners. Right. So I think landowners are probably notified at this point, okay. um, but I don't believe they've started getting any acquisition. So okay. there's a lot of work to be done. Sure. So yeah, it would be a several year process. It, it, sh it should be, I would assume. And then that's assuming that you get voluntary easements on that. Right. Um, anything non-voluntary is above my pay grade, but <laughs> I'm imagining that will be in play. Yeah. So what you're saying is eminent domain potentially could come into play on this type it, of project? It did on previous pipelines through here. Um, I don't know. Through the state. I, I guess I don't know the history of, of Page County. But very much, but. Well, it, uh, it's a safe transportation system. I mean, pipelines have proven to be, uh, I talked with a little bit of experience. My father was a crude oil. Uh, pipeline, yeah. and uh, they transported crude from Casper, Wyoming to Wood River, Illinois, to the refinery. Yeah. And uh, it was a 10 inch pipe, and I don't know when it was put in, probably in the 30s. I don't think there's ever been a rupture of a pipe. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's in their best of interest to keep the product in the pipe. So, but as you can imagine, I mean, landowners don't want pipes going through the property. So there's there's some concern from a landowner's perspective. Sure. And the state of Iowa has done a nice thing by putting this into the code. Um, it's the only state I'm aware of that has a independent county inspection for farmland. Um, we're an ag economy, obviously. So having there be oversight for the landowner's um, land is, is good. Uh, we are the only independent inspection team on these projects, we being the county inspector, from ISG or whoever you happen to go with. Um, everybody else is hired by the pipeline, but we're hired by this board. We can be fired by this board, and we can't be fired by the pipeline. So it, it's an independence that's unique on these projects, and I think it really benefits the landowners. Great. Well, appreciate you coming. Any questions? Uh, from How soon do we have to make a decision on signing the contract? You have, so at this point, it's not a contract. 
just an agreement. It's, it's the letter of intent, which okay. gives us an understanding of when we go to staff. These mm -hmm. there's 32 counties that are impacted by this right. project. If right. we get six counties or if we get 32, that's very right. different staff. Sure. So sure. just trying to get that number play. Right. Uh, it really depends on what you find value in. I personally think there's value in having a county inspector at that October 14th meeting. Um, a lesson learned that we had from Dakota Access is, is the state was playing catch up with that project. The pipeline was so much further ahead in their planning, mm -hmm. and it was the first major pipeline that's gone through the state since these, these codes were enacted. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knew what it entailed. Right. Um, now there's a much more experienced state, counties, mm -hmm. um, and inspection staff understanding that time is a benefit on the front of it. Mm -hmm. So the sooner you were to hire an inspector, the sooner they can start coordinating with your landowners, mm -hmm. uh, communicating with this board, conveying information over to the pipeline, mm -hmm. just get a, a more thorough understanding of what they're going to, to come to contact with. So, but October 14th, that's what really long way to say. <laughs> we, need to, we need to make a decision before the 14th. I, I think it's in your best interest, yeah. but it, it's, again, it's up to you. You just need somebody there the day they start they start inspection. So you kind of have 18 months if you want to take yeah. that. But right. the fact that there's no costs associated with this, mm -hmm. I guess I, I don't see the point in waiting. Um, I'll just give you a quick anecdote on that. Cherokee County for Dakota Access really resisted um, moving forward with county inspection. They didn't, they didn't want the project. Their landowners didn't want it. So they were kind of reflecting that. So they held off as long as possible. They were the last county to hire an inspector. And we went through that process with them on Dakota Access. On this project, I notified them at the same time I did all the other counties. And I was on their agenda three days later. And after a 10 minute conversation, they were the first one to sign up. So they saw value at least in what we did. Uh, I hope how many, how many counties have signed up so far? Seven to date. Out of the 32. Out of the 32, uh, with the utility board having approved that schedule, I think there's going to be more. I'm, I mean, I have two meetings today, including this one. Sure. I have 11 over the next three weeks. Okay. So I'm expecting that number is going to go higher. Um, I would like there to be all 32, to be honest. I think the, the continuity of inspection uh, creates a lot of efficiency, but I anticipate some kind of okay. So October 14th, where is that meeting? It will be at the Shenandoah Public Library. Okay. And time is at seven or eight. It's eleven o'clock. So eleven. Yeah. Then Montgomery County will be like that. So we could catch either one of those. Yes, you you can. Um, there'll be some county specific information at each of those. So I'm assuming by that point they'll have a better understanding of the route, which will be useful for the users. So. You say landowners impacted probably have been contacted by this point. Uh, I, I know that a county I spoke with yesterday had received a letter of notification. Have you, you know, has the Page County received anything from the utilities board? No, I, okay. I haven't seen anything with you. Yes, I did. did now you? that you mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think that's just a notification for the public meeting. Okay. Um, I don't know what their communication was. I, I saw it on. The news somewhere. I did see an article about it, but I yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah, I have to dig up that uh, email. Maybe that's what I did get. Maybe I did get that. I regularly get emails from the Iowa uh, Utilities Public Board. Utilities Board, yeah. and a lot yeah, of times, quite frankly, they they come out of the blue, and mm -hmm. and I think I'm on a master list, and some of the things don't really pertain to us here. If you got on to a docket at some point they put you on the list and you have to write to them and say please remove me please yeah. remove me okay. yeah maybe i need to do that yeah so all right well evan really appreciate you Absolutely. taking time and uh, sorry we were a few minutes late oh no you're you're fine i appreciate your time yes well safe travel to uh, mills county tell our friends hello over there we'll do i appreciate right. it thank you thank you okay, okay. thanks thank you. <clears throat> and Quinn Slavin was with Summit Carbon, the one that called us. And I don't know if you did a webcam with him or a, assume if you ever got hooked up, but I did. And I think you did, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. And he was with Summit, which is his Yeah, mother. he is with Summit. Yeah. So very interesting. Yeah. How soon do we want to put that on our agenda?
Well, I'd like a little study time. I mean, to me, it's just a, there's a lot of information here. Yeah. yeah. But on the article you're talking about, there was a map. Did you see that? Yes, yes. And it looks like it's just right down the line. Right down the line, yeah. the map's the yeah. free map page. Yeah. Looks like it goes right down Highway 59 and goes and then goes straight through Fremont. Like. Yeah. yeah. So. So tied into all the ethanol plants. Yes. Yeah. They feed into a big line and they take off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but from that webinar that Alan referenced, uh, the end game. You know, there are two ways that they see this as a benefit, the, the people proposing it. Number one, they, they get the carbon out of the out of the atmosphere. And number two, if an ethanol plant is zero carbon, they can market in California. Right now they can't sell their ethanol product in California or on the East Coast for the most part. Yeah, I don't have an email. So they did when I Okay. All right, uh, we're going to now move into the tax abatement of the City of Clarinda Resolution 38-2021 and discuss improved tax abatement of parcels uh, on 15th Street, City of Clarinda. That's 39. Thanks, Evan. Thank you, Evan. So what we have in front of us, I, I stopped down to the treasurer's office. Get that. What makes what makes this a little bit sticky? Order. No right answer. Hey Gary. Yeah. Were you trying to talk? Uh, no, no, I'm I'm listening right now. Okay, very good. Um, was the uh, the city of Clarinda was gifted this uh, property that they now inhabit for City Hall from Bank Iowa. And the taxes that are in question, thank you, Corey, taxes that are in question in 2020. Typically on a transfer of property, there's a sale involved and the seller brings the taxes up to date and that's a part of the transaction. This was a gift. So it's kind of like being on the price of winning, winning the showcase. So now you go home with the showcase and you've got taxes to deal with. So the numbers, as best I can tell, um, you know, the, on the tax statement, the city of Clarinda is being taxed. The, the tax bill is 51% belongs to the city of Clarinda. So you take those dollars basically off the table because it would just flip flop the way I'm looking at it. And then your Clarinda School District is involved in about $4,900 of this tax bill. Your general basic fund is about $2,400 um, and on down the line. So the, the question is what you guys want to do? Here's if anybody wants to look at your tax bill. The, the city going out of there at the half because they took possession of halfway through the year or something. What's where they come Well, I would like Gary address it. I mean, they would like to have, I think, full abatement of the taxes other than the, the calculation on square footage of the city hall now, the current city hall, 22% of that is leased out. So they're not asking for, for that abatement. Am I saying that correctly, Gary? Honestly, the uh, the tax portion I don't believe has actually been put on there yet. Uh, we just recently leased uh, 1,500 square feet to Farm Bureau Financial Services, so that probably isn't reflected on this yet. Okay. Um, can I just tell you, Chuck? Just just kind of. Give you the little background on it. Obviously, uh, the the building was donated to us, and we have put um, ninety eight thousand dollars of improvements into the building, um, of which I just told you fifteen hundred square feet of it uh, will be leased out. So I know that 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 part will be coming back on the tax rolls, and then the old city hall we had approximately twenty five hundred 
square feet uh, that we're leasing out. So there's part of that that's gonna come back on the tax rolls as well. So, so even though uh, we're asking for you to abate these taxes, there is gonna be some future revenues that come. Plus Bank Iowa right now, their assessed value of their new buildings, $2.1 million. So, so that's something else that you're gonna see as uh, far as future revenue goes. Sure. Well, I, uh, not that it really matters, but whichever way this board goes, there's, there, there's potential for somebody saying it's a wrong call. And I think there are probably two right answers here, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, uh, uh, very appreciative of the investment bank I was made uh, and what improvements you've made. Uh, I, so that goes without saying it should be applauded and not penalized. However, the other side of that, when we have, and we, we've had a couple examples in the time I've been on the board where there's been a transfer of property and the selling entity did not bring things up to date and the buyer ended up having to pay and it caused a lot of, uh, well, angst and like, well, why is this there? So we, we I don't know. Um, I go, I go either way. Uh, so going forward, where this is about last year, right? yeah, this is the really next, the, the new year, they will be, except what's rented out, will be available. Right. Correct. Right. There'll be there'll, there'll be no taxes part that is the city's. Yes. And this was, is this do the bank Iowa still have possession of it for this amount of time from last year or what? The fact that they gifted the building, there's the taxes weren't paid. And everything operates in the rear. Right. Yes. So the tax yes. Always in the rear. Yeah. Um, so really, from a fairness standpoint, the taxes, you know, the city is going to, if if I'm looking at this correctly, the city is going to pay your portion, and you're going to get those back. Right. Um, the school really is the one that, that takes the hit yeah. if you abate the taxes. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't know didn't talk. I was gonna give Chris and her board a call and ask them because I know their their levy went up because of uh, you know they're running high expenses. So I don't know in the big picture four or five thousand dollars then is not big mm -hmm. in their budget, but it does grow. Yeah. yeah. And I will say that the school was very supportive in this project. In fact, uh, one of their classes actually uh, came in and built the cabinets uh, that we have. So it was really a joint operation between us and the school on doing some of the remodel work. So I do know they're very supportive of this project as well. Well, um... Any other questions or is there a motion? I mean, we're, we've got two resolutions and I, and I'm, can you give us a little history on uh, Christy on the split here? Let me see those papers again on these parcels. Cause I don't think. Basically the second parcel that you've got on there uh, where the tax was 216 bucks, that's the new pocket park. Um, that oh. was a vacant area that had trees in it, the Bank Iowa maintained. And now it's a pocket park, which I feel like that was a, a very good investment as well. I think that the, we cleaned that up and uh, it's looking um, outstanding at this point. So I think that was definitely um, some a big improvement that we've had here as well. So the city, a long-term city maintains a pocket park? Yes. Okay. So that's why yeah. two. You know, does this set a precedent? Something like this? I'm trying to think this through. I don't know. I don't know. I I I think the one thing to look at is the fact that they went from paying fifteen thousand for that building and the property taxes. Now they're paying almost forty one thousand for the new building and property taxes. So the area has gained a tremendous amount by Bank Iowa's investment in this community and the school district and everything else. Uh, yes, it's caused a hit, so to speak, but there's also a really huge gain in values. Uh, so 
I think being a city falls into a kind of an unusual situation. You know, I no, I don't. But I, 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 I don't like the fact that they gave up something. And but yet on the other hand, they are investing. They and Bank Iowa invest a lot, and, and they're they're even though they. If they'd have sold the building they to a private, then they'd have, the money would have been. It would have. But I think this is very unusual. Well, the city also got a whale of a gift there. Yes, they did. Yeah, they did. Zero dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And so, they spent money fixing that. But not yes. Well. It's a good investment for our community. So. Here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like to say I, I could go either. I mean, I do my these, heart my heart wants to obey them. Yeah. Because I think that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it does set up. To your mm -hmm. point, there is a precedent there, but it's an it's a really it's very unusual. unusual case. Case. Yeah. There's a lot of factors that make a big difference in this. If Bank Iowa would have gifted and not stayed in town, I'd have felt different. Yeah. But considering the investment that they did, that's huge. So Twenty-four hundred dollars towards the county. Yeah. Taxes. Forty-nine hundred for the school. So. Have to take do the take that hitch away from JD. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, we just spent a lot of money. <laughs> do the abatements need to be separate or together? I think since they're listed separately, they Probably need, to, need be. to be. So the the pocket parcel, let's deal with that first. And that's, that's the top one. That is uh, the two hundred. Uh, well, I don't know which. You have, so you have a resolution here. Parcel number block six. These tax statements are mm -hmm. difficult to read, and there's just a lot of information here. Okay, legal description. The, the little pocket is yeah is O eight three one one five forty five thousand. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve tax abatement for the pocket parcel number that ends in 45,000 on 15th Street uh, to approve the tax abatement. That'd be number 392021. Okay. Okay. We have a motion by home or by Armstrong, second by Holmes to abate resolution 39 2021. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. Pocket park is done. I'll uh, need more discussion on the first one. So you can make a motion. We can I'll make a motion to uh, make a tax abatement on the resolution 382021 uh, for the actual property of City Hall. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And again, uh, Gary, I, I think Gary would probably agree they got a tremendous gift. This is really an unusual situation mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah. Kinda, Subscribe. I'll also invite you guys to uh, next a week from tomorrow, uh, September. We have a ribbon cutting and grand reopening at um, 10 a.m. So I definitely uh, invite you guys to come to that as well. We'll, we'll have goodies too, <laughs> even if it costs eight yeah. <laughs> thousand. Well, that's great. Goodies are always. As long as you're not making them, Gary. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Okay, well, we've got a motion and a second discussion. Oops, I don't know. I was think about this. Uh, Gary, do you think that, you know, as someone that collects taxes, how it looks to try to evade taxes, you know, for a year back, I don't know, how do you feel that look or is that the right precedent to set to do? Well, uh, Obviously, I, I would be for abating the taxes on that because we didn't really budget to pay this. Um, but you know, I also understand, like you said, we did get a heck of a deal on it. But, you know, when I sit down and crunch the numbers. Um, I feel like the school um, is going to be on our side on this because we partnered on projects. So so really, when you sit down and look at it, uh, you take us and the school out, you're, you're talking 3600 bucks. Yeah. Um, that's actually... So I guess that's, you know, and maybe that's another route you guys could go, maybe just to bait a portion of it. I mean, I, I would assume that that could also be done. 
Yeah, that could be done. Well, the, the motion on the floor is to abate the entire bill. Um, so I'll call for a vote on, on that motion. Uh, all in favor of abating the bill in its entirety, say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Say nay on that. Okay. All right, so motion carries. And uh, again, I, I'm i sure that there'll be some folks that disagree with that, and I understand, because it's, yeah. it's not a clear cut, and it's extremely unusual. Um, but in the big, big picture of a $15 million budget, uh, our $3,600 probably uh we'll get it back with the investments that have been made plus yeah, the bank iowa, you know, and with, yeah. with bank iowa plus the uh on the future tax roll too now that you vacated an area where we occupy we rent from part of that will be leased and will be back on the tax rolls too so i see all that i understand all that. i just yeah. wonder if uh this is people who collect taxes you then you ask for everybody like to have their tax for things. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, you, you know, I, so no, I know. It's a one year deal, so that's why I voted nine. Mm -hmm. I respect that. And I like to say I could have gone either way. All right, let's uh, move on to, yeah, to the next uh, uh, suspensions. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, Gary. So board communication. Nope. Uh, oh. tax suspensions for fiscal year oh, 22. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We have <laughs> how many how many dollars do we have? Or we don't we don't have that. We just know that we need to, for those are the ones that are done through Department of Human Services, correct? There's a certain number of people each year that can file for uh, postponing their taxes due to financial hardships, whatever. Um, and each year that it's up to us if we want to allow that to happen, Jacob, and it's just a kind of a standard. We do it every six months, right? Or once a year, just once a year. Okay. okay. So it's done for all both tax, tax years. So. They've all qualified through their the process when they're presented to us. Questions, Jacob, is there anything on there? I'd make a motion to approve the tax suspensions for the fiscal year 22. Second that. Okay, we have a motion to second there. It's a total of three individuals. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Oh, okay. All right. So now we're to board communication. So we don't need to sign any of these, do we? Back to you. So everybody had a chance to go to ISAC? Yep, ISAC, and I also worked in SWIPCO on Thursday. So, okay. Jacob, uh, thoughts on ISAC? I thought it was something else. I thought it was something <laughs> Pretty else. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's tough and recorded for the meeting here, but there Pardon? was there was a lot of a lot of information. Information and just been a lot of people in the same boat mm -hmm. going through the same things. Mm -hmm. And they've some of them figured out some different ways to deal with it. True. I think the networking, just being able to bounce things off mm -hmm. people was pretty valuable. Mm -hmm. People can think of something you didn't think of. You know, they learned maybe they went through it a year ago. Mm -hmm. They've seen how it played out too. So that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Eight hours or whatever it was, or all day the first day of the American Rescue Plan was overwhelming. Yeah, I just think mm -hmm. what world do we live in when we talk about 
all this money that basically was printed. Now we got to figure out what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Correctly. Yeah. And everybody's yeah. doing it different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. some they have just sent out. Fast, some have been, yeah. or, you know, we're going slow. Or, I just got an email. I'm not sure if you guys received that. The ARP portal is shut down or having troubles because people are having issues and oh. they have they have now allowed, they just said, fill it out. We're not going to judge anybody until a year from now. So so that took care of my little yeah. snap. Yeah, we learned. Uh, yeah, we learned there. You know, and of course, they didn't tell us we were even going to talk about this until a week ago or a week before. Yeah. And uh, it's just been a, it's just been interesting. The one guy that talks probably the most they have mm -hmm. there, he sure seems to say slow. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's his county, that's what they're. Yeah, yeah. very, very slow. slow, very slow. If there's a question, think about it. Yeah. We've got time. Well, yes. the thing that I learned that I didn't know, I thought we had paid the interest back. Well, the interest is ours, so. We interest, but we, yeah. we want to go slow. Not for borrowing, <laughs> but if they're, they're saving, yeah, you make yeah. money on interest. But. Yeah, we'll pick up our. Uh, so yeah, there was a lot of that first day. Was, yeah, it was a very good, very good seminar. Very good. Mm -hmm. A lot of good discussion. And um, I don't know, I haven't been to enough of them to know, but several commented that attendance was a little bit down. Yeah. You know, with the mm -hmm. Delta scare and people, whatever. But, and uh, we had, I thought, decent representation from our, mm -hmm. uh, our staff. But I would encourage all of us to encourage our people to exactly mm -hmm. what you said. Sometimes the meetings aren't as good. Sometimes they're okay. It's sitting that around. networking thing is it's sitting around. And that is valuable. Yeah. yeah, very valuable. On the architects, I talked to several of the architect people mm -hmm. on the plants and build mm -hmm. stuff. And and a lot, I talked to a lot of them about you know increased cost of building materials and all that. And everything works off of a percentage. Mm -hmm. you know, we talk in there. And I don't, there's a couple of different ones. I don't think the one that came here, but they all said that all could be negotiated. I mean, mm -hmm. because of the right now, they have some additional expense inflation, but nothing like would be right. Mm -hmm. So we can, yeah, we get to yeah, the jail is going to cost 15 million instead of 10. Yeah, their seven percent might be we need to go five. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And gotcha. they all encourage yeah. that. That's yeah, the, these are the guys selling. Like, yes, we would come to the table. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, of course, yeah. they want to come to the table. So, yeah, they they're are. hungry. So. Yeah, they are hungry. But yeah. it, is a, it is a wild swing. Yes. And when you work on percentages, mm -hmm. they know what they're going to get dollar wise. And this has made a wild increase for them. So, yeah. no. they would have a lot of area. To Definitely true. Less. So, I don't know if Lyle ever got the information we need for our. I'm not study. sure. They said they're waiting on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Let it on him. So, our study is kind of stalled. Yeah, right. right. Architecturally, we will have uh, on the proposed window idea, we'll have uh, some proposals in here by the 14th. Is yeah. this to? That is just an informational the, piece. I think that's for your knowledge only. Just to learn it's just to a little bit about the process, and it's pretty vague. When you read through that, I just glanced through it. There's a lot of, it's a broad stroke. And the general way to go about building a public. No, what we do is we learn to use those architects. They know the exact rules and our auditors. They also work with the Secretary of State, so they know exactly the exact dollar amounts. You saw they mentioned a little bit about schools and different things. So it's just kind of a broad, it's just to wake us up and make sure we don't go out and do something without making sure we're following all the guidelines. That's but there will still be a test on it, so make sure. <laughs> but I did, uh, I found it interesting. ISAC sent out a uh, reminder about these federal dollars, mm -hmm. I believe, not being subject to Davis Bacon rules. Mm -hmm. And one of the architects mm -hmm. that was looking at the windows was concerned about yes. Yes. Davis Bacon. So, right. Uh, again, th that's why those mm -hmm. projects mm -hmm. need that expertise and yeah, it costs you yeah. money. But yeah. if you don't do it, it costs you more money. Yeah, it costs you much more money if you just analyze. So, so um, one other communication from public health. Um, there's a clinic, a COVID clinic today at the public health office at the annex from one till six. 
And then again on September 14th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the office, they will start doing general public booths the week of September 20th, but the schedule is yet to be determined. So wanted to put that okay. onto the record. Okay, uh, we've all had a chance to look at minutes. Any suggested edits or deletions, or do we have a motion to approve as presented? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Okay, motion by Armstrong, second by Holmes to approve the minutes from August 24th. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and uh, we have no uh, claims to go over today, but we pay all have, the bills. Huh? Pay all the bills. Pay all the bills. We have the resolutions to sign. Let's see. Of course, it's just chairman. All, uh, all three. All three. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'll get those disseminated okay. here. Let's see. Okay. Check it. Nice to attend. Yeah, that's a Schneider geospace. I picked up several of those. I asked the guy first if I said blue pens are a commodity. Now, which one, Jacob? I've got the one that we all three voted yes on. Okay. So that's what that one is the one. No. So do you need, what is it? Does Jacob need to cross out the I and write no? Okay. Nay? Okay. I thought yeah, I want to make sure Jacob you had the right one there. So he's got the name one? He's got the name one. Okay. I hope I told I'm I'm sure I told you right. Yeah. It's 30, yeah, 39 was a little parcel. Oh, so I think we've got that right. All right, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Okay. There you go. Thanks for joining us on Zoom. Hope you all could hear everybody. Sorry we didn't get a mic in front of everybody 100% of the time. We've got some shy guys. We do.